Okay, how's it going, guys? So today we got a quick walkthrough here, and this walkthrough I'm actually gonna talk. So anyway, so a few walkthroughs ago, I put out um, an arena, an arena walkthrough of my arena, and since then, I've transformed it. And sorry, the render distance is really bad, just because of I'm recording in my computer. This computer is not good for distances, but um. Just a sec here. Okay, so I transformed into a survival arena. And now, probably the first thing you're going to be asking is, why is it so small? So, the thing with that is, the thing, sorry, I'm, I'm still trying to think here. And load it all in. Ask it. With old uh, survival arenas, or the most common ones, they're huge. They're, like, absolutely huge. And all they rely on is you finding the right items and the luck of the draw. So, but with this survival arena, it kind of takes the exact opposite of that. You, so basically, there's four, I gotta switch my mouse, mice here. There's four, no, eight to sixteen players that can play in this map. Or more, I guess, if you really wanted to, but... Probably the best would be two per, two per team, and each there's four biomes, and two people in each biome, and that creates a team. So at the beginning of each round, two people start in the. It's uh, kind of weird actually. Two people start in there. There being the starting area, and they have one day, one night, like day night cycle. And usually when you start the map, you should start it in the morning, and they have one day or night cycle, to find as many things as they can but instead of that like oh you might find it you're definitely gonna find stuff it's just how you use it so stay i starting in the sand biome i'll get a shovel a whole bunch of ovens and st and crafting benches and that's basically it but then the thing is since deserts don't offer a lot you have chests up here and each chest contains like certain items that can help you in your battles but the thing is they're not going to help you to the extent where it's going to actually prove to do anything in the game without teamwork so two people is a lot for what you're given in this certain biome it's not a lot for two people so the desert biome doesn't offer any great it offers very materialistic things but it doesn't offer anything to survive so that's where it's like it's kind of like a treasure area but then where you have the forest area it doesn't offer treasure but it offers resources so say you're in the desert biome yeah you may you find like a wooden sword and some nice wooden tools to start off but after like three days you're kind of screwed because you never made an alliance with the wood place which can su support you with uh sticks and wood for your house or your fortress or you never s went with the um stone so that you could dominate the wood place take over their resources and create a huge fortress to fight off the islands so the thing is it's, it's not like just running around trying to kill as many people you actually have to think about what you're doing so the desert you could uh team up with the forest biome and make an awesome fortress but then if these two biomes the island and the stone biome team up together then they'll have the treasure which this is also a treasure biome and stone which can create weapons of mass destruction but the other thing is food food is a big deal in this the stone biome Unless you can find, like, a stray animal walking around, which is be hard because they'd have to get over the lava and stuff. They, the stone biome abs has absolutely no food. So you can have, like, tons and tons of iron swords and everything. But if you can't create a reliable food source, then you're screwed. So desert, desert biome, you may get... It's really far away, so it'd be really hard to travel to. But the desert biome, you could team up with them, but it would be... For food, it would be a terrible idea. But I guess it. But the other thing is, there's no rule against pillaging. So if you really wanted to come over here and start fishing, because there is fishing rods scattered throughout the, the map, and it, that that reminds me, you can break blocks as long as it's not wool, the entrances, or anything that gets you out of the area. But you can break blocks and dig and stuff. But you'll need the tools. So if you can find a fishing rod, and I'll get to that later. But if you can find a fishing rod, then yeah, sure, you can fish from them. But if they don't want you to fish from them, they can, like, do whatever they want. Like, declare war on you, team up with other biomes to kill you. And it's really, it's it's a strategical game. 
by the same time like say stone and island want to take over the forest biome but then after they do they're fighting over the forest biome themselves because they wanted to, s to split up the land so it's kind of like um territorial wars whereas if three people team against up against you your best bet is to make a fortress and see how long you can last but so getting to the beginning of the game you all start in a little area like this and back here too and everybody will kind of start in this little area and usually you'll be in a skype call if that would probably be the best idea depending if you're like with random people or not but so you all and you'll have your plan time to do a plan and whatever and then you'll come to here and there will be a door there don't worry actually i'm not going to use this biome for an example because it has a lot of secrets in it and each biome is unique it's not it's not just the forest biome is probably the plainest biome but only because it's the most sustainable biome like you're gonna find absolutely no treasure in the forest biome because it has the food and the necessities for you so you're not gonna really need the the bow and the arrow although it would be nice you're not gonna have it but you have what you can sustain to be life or however you want to say that so their best bet would be to team up with one of the treasure islands or the stone because wood and stone equals some awesome tools but so you start in the area and once the battle starts the first thing you're gonna want to do is find the ender chest in the area the ender chest will be an like an insta head start in front of all the other teams and inside offers the tools well the necessity tools necessary uh, necessary tools i don't know why there's a grass block in there but Oh yeah, for trees. If you want to plant a tree and you don't have a, like... Sorry, I'm... I have the flu. <laughs> anyway, if, you, if you're living in the stone biome or the desert biome, you're not going to have that dirt to plant your trees. So, 10 saplings, that also go a far away for the stone biomes. Bone meal, which will also incorporate torches, which is go very good for night. Because once night comes, you're kind of screwed. You're SOL for, um for mobs and stuff because there will be mobs or there should be mobs if you're playing hardcore mode or whatever so torches are like a necessity or else you're going to be camping inside your house like all day all night i guess but then and then you have your sword your pickaxe and your fishing rod so defense uh more resource collecting and food supply so then if you get to the ender chest first you have a, des a definite advantage over all the other biomes to start off with and the thing about it is um we got i'm gonna be fixing this up because it's so easy to get to the i'm gonna move that ender chest somewhere because it's really easy to get to but yeah everything is timed around like the ender chest in the forest biome is somewhat hidden same with the stone biome and the water bi biome it's basically really simple once you get right outside of your biome you time set Okay, there we go sorry about that um so in the island biome is pretty simple all you have to do is swim to it but the thing is if the stone biome is looking around by the time that they find their ender chest you'll be right around here by the time the forest the forest biome is a bit more difficult because it's hidden but it's in a really like if you know where it is you're going to instantly get it first so I'm, i might have to fix that about around a little bit but um and then the desert biome was overpowered. I gotta, I gotta switch that up a little bit. But then, the awesome thing about the lighthouse is it's an amazing place to see what's actually happening in the biomes. And I know right now it's kind of hard because I'm not playing in full render distance. But in there, there's a bow and an arrow. One bow and one arrow for one team. And it's an amazing place. Like if somebody's trying to fish off your land, you could shoot them. But it's not in an overpowered place like in the forest biome because nobody's gonna be running around swimming in here so yeah it's kind of but then also you have your you have endermen you have eggs to spawn enemies so that could be really an advantage if you have a fortress you could just lay mobs all around your area if somebody's trying to attack but that's just an idea so and then you have your potions of and whatnot and the thing is there's enough resources in here that you could trade with the stone biome for their stone or iron or coal or redstone or whatever you need from them. So you could trade your potions for their resources or 
wood could trade with stone to create weapons of mass destruction against these two which have an early game advantage so realistically the only way that you're gonna win is teaming up with somebody unless you all go every single biome goes for like an all-out attack on each other and that's where skype kind of comes into handy like you don't you can call in and out on skype so you might be skyping with the desert biome and then you'll hold that call to skype with the force biome and it's kind of like if you've ever played trouble in terrorist town it kind of exactly like that where you can't really trust them but you have to in order to survive so that's where it's kind of different from the hunger games or the hung the survival areas but and then the final thing is hell well not the final thing i have one more thing to cover but the final biome is hell and the thing about this is you're not allowed to go into hell until the grace period up and you may be asking yourself now like what's the grace period the grace period is when the when the map starts it's kind of it would be really kind of well i'm not gonna say stupid but some biomes have an early game advantage over other biomes like the forest biome doesn't have any tools like any um weapons right to start but then the desert i'm I'm, I believe does. I'm not exactly sure because I can't remember what I put on all the chests. But I know the stone one does. So if the grace period is about one to two days, it's personal preference amongst who's all playing. But and the, and the reason that is, stone could just get their stone axe or stone uh, sword and immediately build a bridge over the lava, come here and kill them with no uh, defense. So that one or two day period gives enough time to. Um, for the forest biome or whatever biome that doesn't have the tools to actually make the tools so that they can't whine oh we didn't have that we didn't have the time to get our stuff so and then so the thing about hell is you're not allowed to f enter this area until you've en you've ended the grace period so say it's been two days and the first two days you're not allowed to enter here because it would be overpowered because in hell there's some really overpowered weapons and tools i don't think i'm going to show them just just to keep you all interested so once you run into hell once the two days period is up you can run into hell but the thing about this now is well one you, you have a really good chance of dying and once you die you're done for good your team you're not your team loses but you die and you have to enter the audience to watch and it's you if you're any if you have another team member it's just them left so you're kind of yeah it's kind of crappy like that but so once you get to hell there's some awesome uh weapons and tools and one other thing that i'm not going to say but it's it's pretty exciting so i'd be psyched for that um and then the last little thing that i think the thing that i last thing i can remember to cover is in here you have your special tools and whatnot so in this one there's four little areas like this and they're each team is only allowed to have two you cannot go in more than two of these areas because that would just be overpowered completely so if you have two you have enough for each team member to get a set of armor so that's why i kind of did that and then the team that's slow to do it doesn't get anything so kind of puts you at an advantage without making it kind of like it still adds a challenge into it without making it op and each um, four area has a tier of of weapons and tools and armor. So you have leather, chainmail, stone, not stone, uh, iron and gold. And I'm not going to show where which ones are. Because if you open one, you're not allowed to open any other ones. And to open it, you need like a, a pressure plate or button or something like that. So stone and wood is they're really in luck there. But, you know, it's all it's all how you play the game. And that's the fun and the challenging part about this. And it's also a bridge. I just kind of realized that. But yeah, so that's the survival map. And I'm going to be putting out some videos with a few friends of mine, other YouTubers, and I'll link to them in the channel, in the description. Not, not today, but in the videos. I don't know how many rounds we're going to be playing of this, but yeah. And I'm just going to turn it on to full render distance, just so you can guys can take all take all of it in. <laughs> I don't know how bad my FPS is going to drop here, but... Um, so yeah, me and a few friends, other YouTubing friends, are going to put out 
a few games of these. I don't know how many yet. It just depends how many we decide to play. And if it's a, if it's works out all good, I might put it up for download for you guys. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, if you want to see what's inside of these little rooms, I have another video. I'm not going to link to it because I'm too lazy to do that. I know I'm terrible, but still. <laughs> you don't know how it is. But yeah, if you want to see what's inside of the actual arena area, because it, there is, there's an outside of the arena and everything, and it's actually an entire city, and this is just part of the city. So if you want to see that, just go to the... All my other walkthroughs are on the exact same map. So... So yeah, just watch some of my other walkthroughs and you'll, and if I do put this up for download, everything in those walkthroughs are in this map. So I hope you guys all enjoyed and leave some comments and ideas as to what I should do next.